speakers. I'm glad to have you all with us here. I have a, a couple of questions I'd like to get to, and uh, we'll start maybe with uh, one speaker, and then you can each uh, sort of chime in if you need to, uh, if you have some thoughts on that. But uh, And some of this we have covered, but if we could just drill down a, a little bit more. Robert, I want to start with you uh, in a question here. Given all of these challenges for AI patents, what would you say are the prospects for obtaining strong, broad, and defensible AI patents? Do you have thoughts on that? And then we'll ask our other speakers. Sure. I mean, look, the flip side of every challenge is an opportunity. So I've seen in my own experience that, first of all, AI patents are generally, for the most part, a subset of software patents. I mean, you certainly can have improvements in AI hardware. But we've seen in the U.S. in recent years a lot more stability in the way that the Patent Office is applying the requirements for patentability to software patents after a previous period in which there was a lot more uncertainty. We've had some speakers talk about the guidelines at the Patent Office, and, you know, they've been relatively stable since 2019. I've seen uh, a lot more certainty and predictability from patent examiners in software patents. And so I think that's going to apply to, to AI as well. And certainly with respect to any AI innovations that have some direct practical application, uh, that's something you can hang your hat on in prosecuting such patent applications to increase the likelihood of getting them uh, granted. Uh, you know, Orlando touched on some of the... Uh, Gui guidelines for patentable subject matter and the MPEP, and we know that improvements in uh, computer technology would constitute patentable subject matter, and there's lots of improvements in AI algorithms that I think you could easily fit within that uh, category. So I, I think the prospects are bright just also because there's so much innovating going on in, in AI right now. I think that the field is ripe for, for patenting. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Simon, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I would echo what Robert said. I mean, it, 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 the EPO, it is very much that AI is viewed as a subset of software. And the, the software, the approach the, the EPO is taking to software is, is, is well bedded in now. And there are arguments around what particular technical applications are not, and there'll always be those. But I think in general, yeah, if you've got an AI innovation that has an application to a particular field of technology, you should definitely look into getting patent protection for that. And it, it's a perfectly reasonable and, and, and likely thing that you'd be able to do. Um, I think where perhaps we might diverge a little bit is where you've got fundamental advances in, in core AI technology. I think that, that, that poses a little bit more of an issue at the EPO because of the, the more focus on the... Uh, the, the, the real world application, but even then there are, there are some things that you can try and some ways around that in terms of specific hardware implementation and, and things like that. I mean, ultimately, the, on a policy level, the sound we hear coming out of the EPO is that they recognize that this is, a, this is the next big tech revolution and, and, and it's necessary for people to protect their innovation in this field. So, so they're on a, on, a, on a general level of very pro, pro patentability in this area, I think. Thank you so much. Uh, Rena, thoughts from you before we move on to Orlando? Um, just quickly, I guess. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, artificial intelligence is an exploding area. So uh, the U.S. Patent Office is seeing a very large number of applications. But on the patenting side, uh, I would caution that you, you want to describe your artificial intelligence in terms of machine learning as to how are you creating that intelligence uh, and not to simply claim artificial intelligence because those sort of claims are not going to go anywhere. It's really how are you training your system? How are you executing it? And as long as you stay uh, on that path, the path to artificial intelligence, I think there's a lot of success in getting a lot of patents. Thank you so much. Orlando, thoughts from you before we move on? Uh, yes. Uh, you know. We can find many examples of machine learning patent applications that have moved to be granted patents. And I gave you two. And in general, you need to tie them to a technical application and include details. 
and also you can write claims that are still meeting the the requirements but do not do not tie you to one specific machine learning application in the two examples that i gave there were two different ways of either calling it a machine learning model or a statistical learning model or that give you that and as long as your spec has enough depth so that you enable it you're, you're okay so i think there is a an opportunity to protect all those inventions that are coming along from machine learning <laughs>